All right, I'm gonna be super useful today. Um, you're going to learn two phrases that will help you out through, throughout your life immensely. Two phrases. First phrase is, how do you mean? How do you mean? Not what do you mean? How do you mean? The next phrase is, what makes you think that? First phrase, how do you mean, is uh, very useful for uh, querying further without uh, any implicit attack. How, the phrase, how do you mean, is kind of a, it's kind of, it's somewhat nonsense. I mean, it's a, it's a bit of an idiom, I, I guess, at this point, but it doesn't make uh, grammatical sense, I guess. Uh, if I say, it, it differs, the thing is, it differs from what do you mean, uh, as the question, what do you mean, implies that uh, the person has been inartful in describing what they mean, uh, as if you've missed the topic entirely. However, that's usually not the case when you're asking a question. If I say, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, this might be a little hard. <laughs> um, I went to the store and saw someone who got their tire changed. You can say, what do you mean? What do you mean is, there's multiple sections of that statement. And what do you mean is unclear as to uh, which section is the problem. The question, how do you mean, <clears throat> is a bit more ambiguous. And because it's ambiguous, I forgot my... <sighs> laptop. <clears throat> That's okay. Because it's a bit more ambiguous, it leaves it up to the, uh, the speaker of the statement to clarify the part that they thought was confusing. So this makes them inadvertently tell you the part that they thought was clear. This, this also works, uh, actually works particularly well with people who are smarter than you or, uh, you know, uh, superiors. Because if I explain three things in a statement, or if I explain, even if I explain one thing in a statement, <clears throat> and I expect you to understand and know, you know, at the drop of a hat, when I mumble something or I half make a statement, I expect you to understand it fully. The question, what do you mean, seems to imply that you have been, you have done a bad job of explaining it, or you failed to understand, or the person has done a bad job of explaining it, or you, the receiver of this information, fails to understand it. The question, how do you mean, leaves that open to the interpretation of the person that you're asking the question to. <clears throat> so if I say point A and point B, and you ask me, how do you mean, and I say, oh, well, by point A I mean and I expand point A, I'm implying that point B is simple or that you should know it. Um, obviously you can question further. I've definitely had, <laughs> I mean, since I discovered that phrase, and it was kind of weird, when I first heard it, it was a little confusing to me, and I, I answered, but I thought about the phrase and what made it confusing, and I started using it to great effect. Uh, people are much, much more open, much more apt to explain fully and they tell you more about what they think about the concept than uh, you would get with a standard, what do you mean, or can you describe that further, or uh, I'm not even sure what else you would ask in place. <laughs> but the phrase, how do you mean, is again, somewhat ambiguous. It leaves it up to the, the speaker or the person you're asking the question to, to kind of determine uh, what they want, what, what part of their statement was unclear. And again, that can give you some insight into how they think about these topics. <clears throat> the second phrase is a thing. What did I think? Oh, yeah. What makes you think that? So what makes you think that is a little bit more aggressive. It's a little bit more abrasive. So that means that you have to speak it correctly and politely. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't want to say it, kind of flippantly. It'll be like, uh, you know, what makes <laughs> it's the emphasis? What makes you think that? Well, what makes you think that? 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 All of this stuff is, uh, and if you're not a Eng native English speaker, I apologize. That might have seemed very confusing. Um, 
Emphasizing the wrong symbol, uh, sil- emphasizing the wrong words in syllables casts in, in syllables in sentences casts doubt as to the uh, the opposite of that statement. So, what makes you think that implies that I would not think that. Uh, what makes you think that kind of implies that it would be questionable to feel that or to do the opposite. Um, <clears throat> Also, be, be very careful when people are being uh, explicit, because when you're being explicit, you're not being implicit. Uh, if I say, I'm against female genital mutilation, then your question, I'm being very explicit. I'm saying female genital mutilation. Now, obviously, the first question you should be asking is, why female genital mutilation? Why not male genital, genital mutilation? Why not genital mutilation? <laughs> Why, why specifically that? And you can do that. You can do that while you're reading the Bible too. It's actually rather interesting uh, when you start reading the the implicit statements too. Um, so, what makes you think that needs to be asked in a very nice. Uh, so you know, uh, well, I just think that uh, the world is uh, a plate balanced on the back of a turtle that's balanced on the back or balanced on the back of uh, elephants. And bounce on back of giraffes standing on elephants standing on one big turtle. You say, ah, what, what's the turtle standing on? And you go, <laughs> it's turtles all the way down. <laughs> so your your response to that has to be, <laughs> sorry, I love that statement. Um, your response to that has to be, huh? What makes you think that? You know, gen- genuinely inquisitive. Uh, because when you ask that question. You are asking, you're, you're basically going, uh, citation needed, um, source please. Uh, but you're doing it politely and you're trying to figure out, you're trying to ferret out where, you're trying to ferret out the origin of this idea. And if my answer to that is, well, I read it in a book, and the answer to that is, well, what was the book? I, I'd be interested in reading it. You know, I, that's, that's, this is something I don't get about people. Like, I don't like being wrong. I kind of hate being wrong. So whenever I find out that I might be wrong, I want to correct myself as quickly as possible. I don't get this. You should celebrate when someone says, hey, you're wrong, here's why. Your answer to that should be, "Uh, holy crow, I didn't realize that. Thank you for fixing that. Thank you for fixing me. Thank you for fixing the way that I think about that. I appreciate that. Now, obviously you don't take anything as uh, as gospel, except the gospel, of course, <laughs> uh, you know, do your own research. But if I say, oh, I read it in 10 books. Okay, w- w- what are the 10 books? I'd be interested in reading them because I, I don't want to be wrong either. You know, right now I think that you might be wrong, but if you might be wrong, there's also a possibility that I might be wrong. So I want to know. I want to know what you know so I can find out. Uh, so what makes you think that is a good way to, to prod to prod gently Uh, because sometimes sometimes you'll find out how horribly wrong you've been Um, the uh, (sighs) yeah the the uh, the reason the the female genital mutilation thing was at the top of my head is because I saw a video recently on uh, much more detail on male circumcision and it's all just apparently it's all just lies and I I knew I knew probably 10% of what he what the guy talked about uh, but I had no idea I had no idea it went that deep how how bad it really 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 was and I don't like saying really over and over <clears throat> so, instead of, I'm against female genital, genital mutilation. Oh, me too. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like, why female genital mutilation? Well, you know, male genital mutilation is okay. That's male circumcision. Oh, okay. Well, well then call it female circumcision. So, uh, I don't want to get into it. I'll, I'll link the video. Uh, don't get your kids circumcised. Do not. It's, uh, it's, 
I can't even talk about it. It's actually, it's actually, it's actually, it, it made me physically sick to think about the implications. Seriously. And that's all I can say about that. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> What was I saying? Uh, <laughs> how do you mean? And you'll be you'll be very interested. You'd be surprised how often you can get away with that statement. And like, what do you mean has a very narrow band of where it can be used as a response, as an appropriate response. How do you mean is much broader. And I might still be expanding that. <laughs> like if I'm not sure what someone's talking about or what they're trying to explain in, in a design how do you mean just kind of opens up the floodgates of more explanation. Um, it also seems to put the other person in a bit of a teaching mode, which people are, are much more comfortable with rather than a defensive, why can't you understand me mode or are you calling me stupid mode? Um, again, uh, what makes you think that is a bit more aggressive. It needs to be, you know, what makes you think that uh, implies that there's another thing that is uh, making, it's forcibly <laughs> requiring you to think a, th a certain thing. So again, it has to be delivered correctly uh, and politely. But those two questions will, will open people up and will open up their minds because you would be amazed at how often the response to what makes you think that is... I don't know, I guess I just kind of heard it. And then you could be like, well, I kind of heard the opposite. Like, do you have any sources that I could kind of look into? Because I don't want to be wrong. And this, <laughs> I don't know, this kind of creates a dichotomy of like, uh, oh, oh, you're right and I'm wrong? Oh, okay, well, can you tell me how to correct myself? Because I am I might be wrong. You know, Tell me what, what I need to do to get myself to be correct. You're, uh, you're kind of triggering a response in the other person to be like, well, he's not being defensive and he's not, uh, attacking me and he wants to be honestly correct. Uh, maybe I should do that. Um, the response, like I said, the response is mostly <laughs> surprisingly, I don't know. I just kind of read it. I don't know. I read an article somewhere. Oh, what was the article? You know, I don't even remember. So why are you... This is this is the problem with modern, uh, modern everything. I guess I don't know modern life. I suppose, I suppose it might have been, maybe it's the information age. Everyone thinks they know everything because they've read some stuff. And this is totally a, a midwit argument. Um, it's like a like a reporter. Uh, the pool is very wide, but it's about two inches deep. You know, I look. I know a lot of things about a lot of things, but my in-depth knowledge is rather centralized. It's, it's, you know, my pool is very shallow for a long ways and then it gets pretty, there's a pretty wide deep end in the, in the middle. Um, there's a lot of stuff I know a lot of stuff about, but I know a little bit about way more. So when we, when we seem to have these ideas or when we, we intake these factoids, uh, and factoid is a good word for that, that are generally dispensed through a third party. Um, like we think, we think we have some understanding and then we carry that idea around like a, like a brand name that we bought that we feel like we have to defend. Like people will, people will vehemently support something and vehemently oppose you, oppose, you know, counter your opposition to their idea. And they're like, Oh, what makes you think that? Well, I read a, an article a bit ago, or like my dad told me once, or a friend of mine uh, read a, a, a book about it. You know, like, so you don't you don't know directly, like you didn't check this yourself. It's just not defensible. I don't know. Everyone everyone knows everything about everything now. <laughs> I suppose it might not have been the case. Or it could have been the case in the past, but there's a. Uh, 
normally, I think it was localized to certain fields, like guns for guys. This is, this is very rambly at this point. Um, like, uh, anything in the, the firearms field for guys, just, people just like talk straight out of their rear end. It's amazing. You know, there's, there's absolutely no humility. There's no willingness to learn. I don't get it. I don't know why people do that. Why men do that in firearms. I don't know if it's like a, a masculinity thing or like a macho thing. Or it's like, well, I'm supposed to know this. So therefore I must know everything about it. Uh, you don't know everything about everything. You don't know everything about anything, actually. <laughs> there is no one thing that you know everything about. Um, I guess that's about all I've got. Oh, yeah. And the other response is, why female genital mutilation? Are you implying that male genital mutilation is okay? Just thinking the old thinker there. <laughs> what is it? Uh, jog gets your noggin jogging, activating almonds. <laughs> all right, all right, all right.